The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. You are the chosen generation. His kingdom rules over all. Psalm 103 and verse 19. You are in that kingdom. When you go, you represent that kingdom. And in a rule over anything that's trying to hold you back or discourage you or keep you or make you fail. They had no idea which way God was going to deliver. Whether he was going to come down 45th Street, down Roosevelt Avenue, whether he was going to come by airplane, by ship, or by automobile, they had no idea what form he was going to come in. But one thing they did know, that the God that they serve, he will deliver you. If you take your kingdom and the word of your king and you stand on it, everything around you must alter itself. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will pay you back. The church been leaving some stuff on the negotiating table. Come on now. Say amen to this. So we have one in, in Exodus chapter 8. Look at verse 28. Now this is Moses sent down here to get these children of Israel out of slavery. Pharaoh's going to have to let them go. Now watch what Pharaoh said. He said, I'm going to let them go. No, God said, God said, Pharaoh is going to let them go and they will spoil the Egyptians. Verse 28. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. That means pray for me. Well, Moses ended up praying for him because we ain't mad at nobody. But notice how he negotiated. He said, now, listen, I'm going to let you go, but listen, don't go so far that I can't see you. Uh, or whatever. Now, that's not the deal. And Moses has to turn this deal down. Now, I'm saying, well, let's look at another one. We looked at these last time, but I want to go further. He said here, he said in chapter 10, verse 24, and Pharaoh called to Moses and said, go ye and serve the Lord your God. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Don't, don't take your livestock. And let your little ones also go with you. What did Moses say? Did Moses say he's going to have a deacon board meeting and check this out to see if you know? No, he didn't need to. He knew what God said. Now I'm saying something to us that the enemy has tried to negotiate us out of this earth. This earth doesn't belong to Satan or his family. Now, I want you to get this because this, this, this is key. This earth that you're in right now belongs to the Lord. And according to Romans chapter 8, you have been made a joint heir with him. That whatever he has inherited, you have inherited. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 115 and verse 16, the heavens, even the heavens of the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21, all things are yours. I'm only telling you, wait a minute, the enemy is trying to negotiate us out, out of something here. He's trying to make us think that the whole earth doesn't belong to the kingdom. So he tells us, okay, 
You can have Bibles in schools, but they have to be private schools. Now, am I right about it? And that is not the deal. The deal is, hold it. We own the whole earth. You, you can't tell us to go in this little corner and have our little Bible study and then, devil, you take all of this. Well, that's what happened. We went to the negotiating table and gave over these bunch of kids. And now the enemy has gotten them. They're in violence. They're in gangs. Put them in jail. Put, it, put a, a metal detector in the schools. The teachers can't teach. The, the, so forth and so on. Why? Because somebody gave it over. Somebody sat at the table and negotiated that thing. Come on now. Now he told Joshua something. Go to Joshua chapter 1, please. Devil is a liar. You see, it's easy to set up in here and say, pray the Lord. But what about standing up and facing the music? Facing all this mess that's going on out here today. Wait a minute. Knowing that nothing can touch you. Because when Moses thought Pharaoh could kill him, he ran. But when God showed him, hey, vengeance is mine. I will recompense. Can't nobody touch you unless I say so. Matter of fact, Pharaoh can't even think about touching you. As many times as Moses went down to Egypt and told and pointed his finger in Pharaoh's face, said, let my people go. Pharaoh not one time called the guys in, say, arrest him, put him in jail, put, 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 persecute him, whatever. Not one time did he touch him. Why? He couldn't even think like that. God can control a heathen's thoughts. And he has made it so in his word. He said, I'm Lord over the heathen. Say amen to that. God is in all kinds of systems. I remember one person in this ministry. They were going to buy a car, and they went down there to buy the car. And once they got down there, sat down, the guy, they picked out the car. The guy looked at it, because they'd been here in faith teaching, looked at it, and saw their credit was so bad. He said, look, we, we can't do anything for you right now. And the Spirit of God said to the guy, get up, get your wife, go and march on the car seven times. Then he got up, just obeyed God, and went out on the showroom floor. Now everybody's sitting in there, and he started, he and his wife, marching around that car. Come on, it don't make sense, but it's going to make faith. And he marched around that car, and then sat down again and said, God said, tell him to check it again. He said, could you check it again? He said, we just looked at it. He said, no, sir, could you just look at it again? He said, well, if you say so, I, I look at it and... Uh, Wait a minute, I must have put the wrong thing in here. God had erased every bit of that. He can go into the computer. He can go all the way to, ah, you better hear what I'm telling you, and reverse it in a day. Now, I'm just saying, I know that we want to get good credit, so forth and so on. But there are some ways that the enemy has used a fact that we didn't know some stuff and put us in the bad situation that we're in. God kept records of it. It's called recompense. He's going to reverse what the devil did and make him pay you for every time you've been humiliated. Man, this has got to be preached. Say amen to this. That's where I'm going. I'm going into manifesting the sons of God. You are the chosen generation. Say amen, amen. I'm telling you, this is a time to shout and praise God because God has kept some records. We need that money because we're going to get this earth back in say amen to that. We cannot stop until we see the manifestation of the sons of God, until we see the word become flesh. God said, my word will not return to me void, but it shall prosper in the thing where I 
sit in because that means where he said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Jesus is not going to be around here until that scripture manifested where he said in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 31 that God will recompense us in this earth. That means every pair, every damage, everything that the enemy has humiliated you in, stolen from you, astounded from you, scammed from you, cheated you out of, it's got to come back. I'm telling you right now, God needs your wealth because with the wealth, we're going to fulfill the call that God has on our lives for this generation. We need to have the wealth. It is our responsibility to get people saved and we're going to save them and finish the job because we are the chosen generation. We're it, saints of God. And favor is powerful. I said favor ain't fair. Favor can turn a slave into a master in 24 hours. Favor can make you poor and go from poverty to riches in 24 hours. I'm talking about favor will change your credit report on every credit system in the world. I'm talking about favor. It'll open a door for you that a man can't open. I'm talking about favor. It'll get you a job that you ain't even qualified for. I'm talking about favor. It'll Two places and we're done. Let's go sit down. Let's go to Joshua chapter 13. Joshua chapter 13. I can feel some faith in here now. I told you Joshua chapter 1, I forgot to read you that. He said, be of good courage. He said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Pharaoh couldn't touch Moses, couldn't even say nothing mean to him. That's the way God's going to be with you. Isn't this powerful stuff? Look at Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. <laughs> but watch this. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Hallelujah. Folks, Hallelujah. I know the body of Christ has been here for a while, but there remaineth quite a bit of land that we're going to have to possess. Say amen to that. Amen. Let's go over to Luke chapter 18 and we're done. Folks, it doesn't require centuries to do what we're going to do because we're going to override time. The vengeance of God covers every kind of attack against you and your family. You have just become impervious. <laughs> impervious. That means incapable of becoming injured or impaired. You have just become impervious. You see, the justice system of the world is the one of the main targets of demonic abuse, the justice system, and we're coming up against it now. Verse one, and he spake a parable unto them to this end. This is Jesus talking to his disciples and to the people who listened. That men ought to always pray and not to faint. And I've used this before and I've taught it on prayer, but let's go further. Saying there is a city in a city, a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded a man. And there was a widow in that city, 
And she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. I understand she's come before a wicked judge and there are some wicked judges. I understand there's some good judges, but there are some judges that are being used by the enemy. Verse four, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not the God of the, uh, not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them when? Speedily. You see, there was an unjust judge. And this particular judge was not a good judge, not an honest judge not a judge to judge righteously. But this woman knew her rights. And she said, wait a minute. Something gonna have to give here. And she said, avenge me of mine adversary. Now understand, she's calling for justice. And I want you to see something here that when you say avenge, God not only hears stop the attack, stop the harassment and stop afflicting and humiliating my people, but God hears this, make, he gonna make somebody pay the damages for what was done. Say amen to that. Now we are gonna talk about that some next time, but I'm here to tell you, you got something coming in. You see, he said, I want you to spoil his house. Now, we're not against people, but it's the devil behind it. And we're going to spoil his house because the thief is the one we're after. I got to turn to this. Come on over to Proverbs chapter 6. Let's just go out there. Proverbs chapter 6. Oh, yeah. I said, oh, yeah. He says this, verse 30. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his soul when he's hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore how much? Sevenfold. And he shall give what? All. When God hears the word avenge, he hears payback. That the damages are going to have to be paid. So I'm saying, don't get comfortable in just being saved. Understand this, that, wait a minute, I got a house, I got two cars and so forth. Oh, well, don't get comfortable. There's much more that you're supposed to have. We don't have to be mad at nobody. We don't have to say, I'm going to get you at 3 o'clock. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will pay you back. Now, I trust that you are blessed by today's teaching. Now, this series is entitled, Your Day of Justice. It's volume three. Now, this is the teaching that I did several years ago, but it's very, very relevant, very timely for what's going on today. Now, we're faced with injustices in the world. That, that is hands down, that is what's going on. But it's important to know that God has chosen us, you and I as believers, the church, to reclaim all that Jesus redeemed. In other words, that things that are out of line, we're supposed to put them back in line with the kingdom. The kingdom is heaven's government. So we're supposed to make these things like heaven on earth. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter two and verse eight, he says, ask of me and I'll give you the heathen for thine inheritance 
and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Folks, injustices have been going on in this earth for thousands of years. But you and I are in this earth as the church to wherever we go is to establish his kingdom of justice wherever we go. Now, things that would normally stop people in the world can't stop us, the believers, the church. We are his chosen generation, chosen to manifest the sons of God in this earth. Again, things that are out of line with the justice of heaven, put them back in line. Now, we don't have to just stay with the courts of this earth. If the courts of this earth make a decision and it's not according to the decisions of heaven, then we can petition heaven. And there's a huge court of the universe in heaven. <laughs> and this court can reverse any decision. Praise the Lord. You remember Daniel and Daniel had to... Uh, uh, stop praying. The Bible, the Bible talks about they passed a law that said you couldn't pray to any other God except the king for the next 30 days or something like that. And uh, what happened was Daniel just ignored it. <laughs> Daniel went up in his room and opened the shutters and began to pray. Well, everybody could see it. He wasn't trying to hide it. And what happened? They arrested him, of course, and they put him in a lion's den. But notice God's justice came in. The lion wouldn't even eat him. And just to check to see if the lions would eat humans, <laughs> after they pulled Daniel out, they put all the people who accused him in there and the lions ate them all up. So my point to you is, is that when you're facing injustice and in this earth and so forth, you don't have to flow with the pressure that they put on you to say and do some things that are not right, not full of integrity and not of justice. Because when you go into the lion's den, if you go, the lions cannot bite you. Or if you get thrown into the furnace of fire, the fire will not burn you. Why? Because of God's vengeance. It comes with his protection. And he said, vengeance is mine and I will recompense, saith the Lord. There's a lot of unrest in this world today. And once you get a, a knowledge and a revelation of vengeance, your whole attitude changes. And we're going to cause people to see that there's a better way that they can do things and they can get a knowledge of what the kingdom is like and want to join that kingdom. Praise God. That's called your day of justice. Now, let me say this, that Jesus on the cross, he paid the price for all humanity. In other words, we were guilty <laughs> and he paid the price for us and actually paid for all the things and transgressions and sins that we committed. So we deserved to have to death. We deserve the maximum penalty. But when he paid it, he freed you. And he was actually the one that paid the price for all of our sins. So we call it justice. God has his justice, but Jesus took what we deserve. Now, as a result of that, he made it so that you could come back to the father. Now, this happened in my life years ago when I was with a company, a computer company, and I was struggling and and didn't know what was happening. And they had cut my salary in half because I was on sales. And uh, here I am I'm all times of night trying to put together a presentation to sell these computers. Nobody was buying. Uh, the baby needed a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Just all of that. But what happened? I got a hold of teachings and they were talking about um, what God had done in my life and had to do with finances. But a lady came by and took me to a meeting one time on the north side of Chicago. And a man saw me and he said, Jesus loves you, brother. And then that's when I gave my life to the Lord. And once I did that, I found that all those things that I was hearing about how to get my finances in order and think it worked. Next thing I know, I let go the second job that I had, took the first job and became one of the top salesmen out down in Chicago. Look what God did for me. And he did this for me because he's a God of justice. Praise God. Jesus paid the price for my sins. Well, I have good news for you. You've been struggling. You've been trying to make it on your own. The Bible says the way of the transgressor gets real hard. So Jesus came to lift that burden. He said, come unto me all who labor are heavy laden, I'm going to give you rest. It's time for you to rest. It's time for you to stop trying to make it on your own. God supplied the, the power and goodness of God in our lives so that we can live a whole together, a altogether different life. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to pray for you. I want to pray for you the same prayer they prayed for me that night 
up there on the, on, in Chicago. And I'd like to pray that prayer for me because when I did pray that prayer with that person who led me in that prayer, a miracle happened. Boom, something happened. It changed in my life. All of a sudden, that burden lifted off my shoulder. I'm telling you, I felt like the world had lifted up off of me. So I'd like to pray with you right now, if you will. Just bow your head with me. Say this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for my sins. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me from now on. From this day forward, I belong to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer for me, something has happened. Praise God, the miracle power of God. Same thing that happened inside of me has just happened inside of you. I want to send you my book. It's called Born Again and Spirit Filled. Now this is coming in both English and Spanish translation. So let me send it out to you free of charge. I wrote it myself. It's just with you in mind. Now it tells you about the next steps that you should have in now that you have become a part of the family of Almighty God. What should you do next? And it gives you some good uh, advice, good instruction, and good guidance. So that's what I have for you. Write me now. Let me know what just happened to your life because you're about, you about to get an adventure in faith right now. God is going to lead you into some places. I'm telling you what the enemy stole. God is going to get back to you. Well, this is Bill Winston saying we love you and keep walking by faith. You are the chosen generation. His kingdom rules over all. Psalm 103 and verse 19. You are in that kingdom. When you go, you represent that kingdom. And in a rule over anything that's trying to call you back or discourage you or keep you or make you fail. They had no idea which way God was going to deliver. Whether he was going to come down 45th Street, down Roosevelt Avenue, whether he was going to come by airplane, by ship, or by automobile. They had no idea what form he was going to come in. But one thing they did know, that the God that they serve, he will deliver you. If you take your kingdom and the word of your king and you stand on it, everything around you must alter itself. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will pay you back. Now is the time for the church to rise up against the injustices of the world in the same anointing of Jesus Christ in Pastor Winston's dynamic, timely teaching, Your Day of Justice, Volume 3. To order on CD or DVD by bank card at 1-800-711-9327 or online at billwinston.org. Order Your Day of Justice, Volume 3, today.